Hi guys, good morning all of you. Welcome back to Hospitality Engineering. Today we are taking a subject chiller. We are going to prepare a training outline activities. To prepare this uh, training outline activities, you need to have the clear nameplate detail. Before we go into the deep, I always remember this quote said by Babuji, one who dives deep gets the pearls. Yes, guys, we deep dive here for your each equipments one by one. This is our objectives. First, you have to collect your make model number of particular equipment which you want to prepare training outline activities. For example, user manual, service manual, electrical circuit, spare parts manual. Also, take site visit and capture all the activities either video or photos. Then, start to prepare the training outline activities. Who will benefit this training outline activities? Any associates newly joined and existing staff can extract the full-fledged services from OEM without any doubt. What do you mean OEM? Your original equipment manufacturer. For example, if it is a train, if train service engineer comes, your team can able to supervise them as the equipment maintain the design efficiency and zero breakdown time. First thing, identify each component's name of the chiller. You see here importance component, one section elbow, two compressor, three terminal box, four electrical control panel, five evaporator, 6 display panel. You can take a picture as well as the photo, side photo, then you can compare it. Some other major parts, economizer, oil tank assembly, budge, condenser, motor housing. So here also we have taken with manual picture and site photo so you can compare it. Understand how many stage in your compressor. If you see here, this is semi hermetically sealed motor. This is a two stage compressor, condenser, evaporator. You can refer what type of condenser, what type of evaporator in your manual. To identify the condenser and evaporator, Evaporator will be always insulated to avoid the heat losses. This is one of the most important component called economizer to increase the efficiency of the chiller. It is used in the train. You can see here there is a what is called this is a economizer. You can see right hand side condenser then left hand side evaporator. The, the vapor goes to the compressor. Here you can see there is an orifice. The liquid refrigerant from condenser goes into the economizer. Then it starts to evaporate. The evap only vapor goes to the compressor. Liquid comes back to the evaporator again for the vaporization. The second stage impeller acts as a section for gas available in economizer and this will affect the capacity but increase the efficiency. You can see here economizer. Here there is a both side orifice. You can say orifice or expansion device. Here you can see it goes to the compressor between the impeller. Variable gate winds. There are two numbers available. You can see here. This is to control the load. Even in case of three-stage compressor, only the two gate vents 
will be there. Number one, which shows inlet gate vane assembly mounted to first stage inlet of a centrifugal compressor. Number two, front view of inlet gate vane in fully closed position. What is gate vanes? Once the chiller started, refrigerant entering section will hit gate vanes at the section first. At startup, gate vane at section should be fully closed. If not, chiller will trip or more load will come to motor which requires more current consumption. Gate vanes load the chiller. First it checks the chilled water leaving evaporator. If it is less than set point, it opens slowly and load the chiller. To conclude, it acts like a thermostat in other AC system, but thermostat will turn off the system. Here, it will not turn off and just keep in standby. If turn off, then turning on requires more energy. If turned off, then turning on required more energy. Maintenance always ensure all joints are tight. Another important point 15 psi burst plate or relief. You can see here this is a burst plate. It will be at the evaporator section elbow. If pressure exceeds 15 psi, it burst and remove the refrigerant to ambient. You can see here this is an inlet gate van. So, whole component is compressor, then you can see the condenser section will be also. You can see condenser and evaporator section view here. Purging unit. Vapor from condenser comes to purging unit and enters from bottom of it and goes to the top. There is a compressor which gives heat to coil inside the tank. The refrigerant condenses at the high temperature inside the tank, but atmosphere does not easily condenses. It will remain as gas at top of the tank and the refrigerant goes back to the filter then to condenser by gravity and this process continues. This gravity flow will pull more gas into the unit and the cycle repeats. Once Atmosphere level gets increased in the tank. It releases it to the region tank next to it. It has carbon filter which further removes and refrigerant in it and then pump out to the atmosphere. Purging unit. You can see here it looks like window AC. Here you can see the region tank. It is a compressor, filter, tank, flash tank, vent tank oil separator, oil sump, it has motor, regulator, heater inside it, some of the important key points, some temperature must be 150 degree Fahrenheit when chiller not operating, must be 120 degree Fahrenheit when operating, since we use journal bearing rather than ball bearing, we need this temperature for this chiller, lubrication system for compressor, you can see here from oil sum to bearing through pump and regulator at oil sum. Return from compressor bearing to oil separator, oil separator to oil sum. This happen by gravity, additional safety. Oil removed from the condenser, evaporator, compressor if escaped and enter into the circuit. So this additional circuit ensure the safety. Refrigerant removal from the oil sump, oil separator, oil separator, oil sump. Vapor collected in oil sump flow from sump to oil separator, then evaporator sucks in the vapor due to the low pressure in it. Also, oil from compressor bearing comes to oil separator and the oil goes to the sump, vapor goes to the evaporator, oil sump. During the operation, oil sump must be above the lower side level. You can see the side class changing the oil filter. First turn to drain, wait 30 minutes and then to change filter. Now remove the filter and change the new filter. Now turn back to run mode. Oil sump. 
oil pressure regulator. Point to note, oil some pressure need to be maintained less than that of evaporator. Don't believe pressure of refrigerant shown by sensor. Use cages. Sensor cannot be used where fluctuations are there. So oil pressure can be taken with the sensor, but refrigerant pressure cannot be taken. Motor cooling, drain pipe for the motor cooling circuit finally goes to the condenser. The blue line indicate drain going to condenser after refrigerant cools down the motor. The red comes from the condenser as liquid and goes to the refrigerant pump at oil sum then it pushes to compressor refrigerant pump is tied to some pump from which it operates i hope you have learned the how to create the training outline activities basic to identify the first stage is a component second stage operation startup shutdown turning on and off chillers before you turn on Check oil tank level, oil tank temperature and chilled water set points. Turn on the following in mentioned order by following the steps in next slides. Chiller plant motorized valve which is found near the chiller control itself. Cooling tower, chilled water pump, condenser water pump, chiller plant. This control panel will be found in all the equipment, pump, chiller, cooling tower. Ensure this standards and then proceed to turn on procedure check for the three phase ryb voltage check green light in closed turn on old meter ammeter switches and check if they are normal check with multifunction meter follow this procedure turn on chiller motorized wall cooling tower condenser water pump chilled water pump and chiller plant now machine is off since the red light is glowing in stopped indicator and regulator is set at the off position turn the regulator to auto or manual mode as per the requirement if auto mode no need to press the green button if manual mode after turning regulator to manual mode press the green button wait until green light glows in running indicator it will happen once vfd starts running at set point now follow the same steps to turn on next this is how it looks after turned on a green light running is on follow this procedure to turn off chiller motorized wall cooling tower chilled water pump condenser water pump and chiller plant now the machine is on since green light is glowing in the running indicator and regulator is set at auto position if running manual mode regulator will be at manual mode press the red button to stop turn the regulator to off mode wait until red light glows in stopped indicator it will happen once vfd stops completely now follow same steps to turn off the next equipment this is how it looks after turned off but nowadays chillers are controlled through only display panel we need to just turn on the chilled water condenser water pump cooling tower only then come to the chiller display turn on same is for turn off turn off at the chiller display and the third turn off the condenser water chilled water cooling tower no need to manually do for chiller and chiller motorized wall however check based on your panel construction you can operate it turning on turning on condenser water pump chilled water pump by following previous detailed slides you can see your control panel display panel now standby chiller ensure this no flow changes to the flow once pump turn on ensure flow is detected press auto and observe the all other parameters auto command accepted by the system click here to open the detail activity page chiller operating mode chiller is auto waiting for the evaporator water flow chiller waiting to start waiting for condenser water flow establishing the loop oil pressure you can see the 27.33 psid 12 psid waiting to start free lubrication time 59 minute second waiting for condenser water flow starting compressor 
once pre lubrication completes chiller turns on with a sound chiller running evaporator leaving water temperature you can see here you can see the set point is in front panel here you can see condenser water entering temperature evaporator entering water temperature now we will see the turning off through the display panel now display panel of duty chiller running now you can see the running press stop button are you sure want to stop the chiller this command you can see on your display press and confirm here in case of emergency there are two provision immediate shutdown to cancel the shutdown preparing the shutdown post lubrication time you can observe evaporator pump off delay you can see it now your stop command is accepted turn off chilled water condenser water by followed the previous d type let it be in the auto mode now we will see the startup seasonal check all the drain walls are closed and put drain blocks in evaporator and condenser header remove oil and fill the cooling tower condenser line close air vent in condenser water box open the walls in evaporator circuit fill the water if evaporator circuit is drained period lubricate external vein control linkage close all the disconnected switches now start with the usual daily startup procedure shut down seasonal open all connected switches except the control power disconnect the switches this will keep heater on in oil tank drain water in condenser line and cooling tower clean it with water remove the vent plug in condenser header coil display panel front panel display panel is different from cpm cpm is monitor through a computer at plant pro to get reports for the daily log you can go to the report page by pressing here you will get this following report now you can compare this evaporator entering water temperature evaporator leaving water temperature and evaporator approach temperatures same condenser water entering leaving then your condenser approach compare with your commissioning initial reports then see the differences then understand what are the interferences same applicable for the compressor motor then your purge purge time to change click over it and it will show like below select the any one and press ok so eas means building automation system ext means external fb means front panel also can be done in the setting chiller settings here chilled water set point changing in display panel here you can go to the evaporator so you can able to change the chilled water temperature here also can be done in this setting and the chiller setting chilled water set point changing in display panel you can see here active you can edit status will be shown on the front panel or pas as per the setting if front panel is active then click edit and change the set points here chilled water set point changing in cpm most of the hotel has cpm which is provided by the oem itself this is how the home page of cpm looks like go to the summary page pump summary page now you can see the status page where you can see the pump auto manual handoff then bft bft percentages then your chilled water chemical dosing pump pressurization unit mainly you can monitor here chilled water supply and chilled water return this is called the status page you can see here condenser water supply and condenser water return go to the status page to control the chiller set point changing alarm reset swap duty chillers now here you can see the chiller plant manager chiller turn on and off select the chiller on tick box press the action select make available to turn on chiller and make unavailable to turn off chillers in case of any alarm a notification will be shown in active diagnostics we need to go there and reset it at normal time go to alarm option and can find the alarm history you can see the chilled water pumps if you have number of chiller you can see the one by one since it is a standby butterfly valve status is showing us close you can see the entire plant summary the schematic of the plant room chiller plant schematic this is called the schematic actually this page will be a graphic like one a graphic will be displaced on duty chiller cooling tower 
we need to ensure the butterfly walls are open near those two chiller and cooling tower during inspection you can see there are four chillers four cooling towers then from buildings chilled water is coming from the buildings through the chilled water pumps it goes inside this system has only the one chilled water pump there is no primary secondary this side you can see the condenser water there are four condenser pumps are there there is a there are four chilled water pump then there are four each chiller dedicated to one cooling tower one condenser pump one chilled water pump during the inspection ensure the chilled water header and chilled water retainer pressure are at the normal rating 8 bar means 800 kpa cooling tower summary you can see here cooling tower summary so which valve is open what is the sump level fan failures efd status all you can able to see here and also you can able to adjust it now plant preventive maintenance daily checkup daily lock start with evaporator check the entering water temperature leaving water temperature saturated temperature refrigerant pressure in psig approach temperature flow switch status same for the condenser in compressor you check the compressor starts compressor run time oil pump discharge pressure oil tank pressure oil difference pressure oil tank temperature igv position igv steps these are the very important log supposed to hvac technician check in the daily basis so you can get it detailed from here evaporator condenser this is a compressor daily checkup daily log for the purge these are the detail for the purge and motors water pressure oil level take your own time write down and check with your daily log whether you are following this if you have similar type compressor ppm quarterly clean all the strainer in all the water piping system calibrate pressure cage temperatures flow cages and sensor check chemical dosing system and take necessary actions ppm half yearly lubricate the vent control linkage bearings ball joints and pivot points operate the tank operators manually and check for any abnormalities lubricate the oil filter shut off one o-rings apply the oil to any exposed metal parts to prevent the rust ppm annual check the condenser tubes for the fouling and clean it descaling it if required check the clean the flow detection sensor submit the sample of compressor oil to manufacturer laboratory for comprehensive analysis measure the compressor motor winding resistant to the ground performance leak test inspect the starter wiring connection and contacts tight adjust as required with certified people fill annual maintenance checklist and take necessary action annual inspection checklist it start with the compressor then go to the starter adaptive frequency drive move into the oil system then condenser evaporator control circuit leak test chiller purge unit exterior optional accessories as you are convenient come back to this page and observe it whatever points applicable you take it for your chillers ppm the scaling of the headers mostly once in year or based on the condenser approaching temperature is supposed to do the descaling if required only we have to do it. remove the petroleum clamp and flanges if any so that we can remove and cover usually both will at one feet gap it has two petroleum clamps if both are removed then end cap is free to move it has a petroleum clamp and flange if both are removed then end cap is free to move petroleum clamp there will be a two grooves in the pipe on which the clamp sits tightly usually there will be a rubber washer in flange so this is a descaling setup you can see here the chemical will be passed through the one wall and it will come out through the another wall this outlet will go to a tank or bucket and we need to recirculate to a pump remove the end cover the water box wash the coils end cap with water ensure all the clamps flanges are tight and no water leakage it is mostly done for the condenser only since it is open circuit oil filter changing this will happen in annually changing the oil filter first turn to prime wait 30 minutes and then to change the filter now remove the filter and change new filter now turn back to the run purge filter changing annually troubleshooting Condenser temperature high, head, header pressure high. 
effect efficiency will be affected no backup water high noisy sound from chiller chiller off due to the cpm so you can table it based on the your chiller manual and your site condition whatever happening in this troubleshooting managing the low high capacity low capacity if chiller capacity is low and count need be low and if this shortage is less then maintain the condenser temperature as low as possible by adding some cooling tower in case of the water cooled and more condenser coil in case of air cooled high capacity if chiller capacity is high convert points offset will make chiller shadow due to the refrigerant low temperature or chilled water low temperature so we can give false load with hot gas bypass it increases evaporator pressure but efficiency will be affected the chilled water temperature can be set up lower than rated set point that will affect the efficiency but it can be done without affecting the efficiency by only reducing the condenser water temperature control point offset is a condition in which the system will turn on or off no intermediate speed running train complaints to the ashray standard 15 train complaints to ashray standard 15 so we'll see the you know what is a ashray standard 15 a refrigerant monitor or detector is present it will monitor and alarm if exceed the acceptable exposure level of the refrigerant and that can activate mechanical ventilations once it detects excess level audible and visible alarms are activated inside the equipment room and outside of every entrance the purge discharge and the rupture disc must be properly piped to the outdoor to remove the pressure during the emergency situation this you can see in the your plan drop this complaints always fulfilled do you know the control panel side of the unit is always considered as the front side of the unit number 4 is the control panel we use paper compression system expansion valve working liquid can be boiled by reducing the pressure around it so we increase velocity and force through nozzle then pressure drops mostly all these chillers uses r123 refrigerant and oil oil 00022 compressor oil some cases r514 refrigerant then this corresponding oil compressor oil is used one stage or two two stage depends on number of impeller in compressor you want then load 3 gpm chilled water flow chilled water measurement is supposed to be for 110 load 3 gpm three stage economizer for three stage compressor in case if you have the three stage compressor then your economizer also will have the three stage so you can see here one two three stages here there is a orifice liquid refrigerant from the condenser goes inside the economizer refrigerant vapor to the second stage of the compression you can see whatever the liquid collected to the bottom of the economizer then it goes to the evaporator for the evaporation also you collect whatever sources available in various resources about the your chiller from manufacturer website or from the youtube or or other channels you can make a link and keep it ready for your team presentation so this is a way supposed to have each equipment training outline activities in addition you can add the equipment spare parts required for the each chiller which we will see in the other separate video so we have come to the end of this video thank you for watching